Number 80. Ethanol, which is C2H5OH, is used as a fuel for motor vehicles, particularly in Brazil. And then we have letter C. Assuming that the automobile's mileage is directly proportional to the heat of combustion of the fuel, calculate how much farther an automobile could be expected to travel on one liter of gasoline than on one liter of ethanol. And assume that the gasoline has a heat of combustion and the density of N octane, which is C8H18. And then they give us the delta H formation of the C8H14, which is negative 208.4 kilojoules per mole. And then they gave us the density for the N octane, which is the gasoline, right? Okay. So let's see. We're in letter C now. So we've done all the work that we have done in the past, in uh, the last two videos. And basically the only things that we need is this right here. We found out, especially in letter B, that in order to run one liter of ethanol, we will be able to release out 21,157.7 kilojoules. Now we're basically seeing a comparison between what's the heat amount that is being released in ethanol, which is this number, versus what we can produce on one liter of gasoline. And I'm just going to put over here, you know, that the gasoline they're referring to as C8H18. So if I say C8H18 and if I say gasoline, they're interchangeable for this question, okay? So we basically have to start from the beginning and do what we've done in the previous videos to basically the gasoline, aka the C8H18. So the first thing is, is I need to find a delta H of the combustion, right? So we have to write a balanced equation. So let's start with that. So C8H18, that's going to be a liquid. And combustion is always plus O2, right? That's a gas. And I will form my combustion products, right? Which is CO2 gas and then H2O gas as well. Before we write the numbers, we have to make sure that this is balanced. So I'm just going to quickly balance it. You could pause the video and see if you can balance it and check with my answer. We've done tons of work with this, right? So we got this. There's eight carbons. So I'm going to put an eight over here. There's 18 hydrogens. So I'm going to put a nine here. Nine times two is 18. And then I have 18 plus nine. 18 plus nine is what? 27. I think. Yeah, 18 plus 9, 27. So I have a total of 27 um, oxygens on this side. And I need to put a number here. So this is going to be a fraction. So I'm going to say that it's 27 over 2. Okay? Now, if you want, you can multiply the whole equation by 2 to get rid of the fraction. But we need our combustion number for the delta H in terms of one mole of C8H18. So I'm not going to multiply it by two in this case because then I can prevent doing an, an additional step. So I'm just going to leave it like this. The numbers are going to be exactly the same if you decide to multiply the whole equation by two. Okay, so now just like all delta H problems that we've been doing up and up, you know, since number 80, we've been, we're 80 deep now, guys, <laughs> we're going to write down, uh, the delta H values. And I went to the appendix for you guys. I went to a back of a textbook to find out what the delta H values we need for some of them. They told us that the delta H for C8 H18 was negative 208.4. And then for oxygen, that's always zero. Coming on to the product side, I have a negative 393.51 and then a negative 241.82. Okay, so we want to find out that delta H of the reaction. So that's this formula right here, right? Delta H of the products, the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants, right? So I just have to get the left side to be one whole number and the right side to be one whole number. So let's do it. I have to multiply each appendix value by how many I have in my balanced equation. So 
I have only one C8 H18, so I'm just going to multiply that by one. Technically, I have 27 over 2, so I'm going to multiply this by 27 over 2. I have 8 CO2s, so that's an 8 in front of here, and then I have 9 H2O, so I have to multiply that H2O value by 9. And then, remember, after I just move this over, that we have to find the sum. This little thing means sum. So in the balanced equation, it says C8H18 plus O2. So literally, I have to plus these two numbers together. The same thing for the product side, CO2 plus H2O. I got to plus these together. The reactant side is easy. This is just going to be negative 208.4. And then let's see what we get for the product side. So I'm going to say 8 times negative 393.51 plus 9 times negative 241.82. I just want to make sure that I wrote down all these numbers right in the calc key. Uh, plus 9 times that. That looks good. So I get a whopping negative 5,324.4. Six. So here we go. Delta H for the reaction. Products minus reactants, negative 5,324.46 minus a negative 208.4. Okay. Let me just bring this up a little bit just so that we get a delta H. Okay. So this is the first part of the question. Let's figure out what this number is. So this number minus a negative 208.4. So I get negative 5,116.06, and that's kilojoule per mole. Okie dokie. So this is the only important thing now, which I will continue using. So if you want, pause the video because I do need to erase some things. I just don't have enough room. So I'm going to erase all the math. The only thing I really need is the balanced equation and the delta H value. So the rest of this goes by, unfortunately. And now we have this. So now we have to see how much heat is going to be produced when I have one liter of gasoline, aka the C8H18. Now, we know how much heat is going to be produced for one mole, but I don't want one mole anymore. I want one liter. So let's see. I have one liter of gasoline, aka the C8H18. And what else did they tell me? Well, they told me that I had a density of 0 0.7025 grams per mil. So let's see. Can I do anything with these? Well, the liter would be a volume. So I have a volume. The density they gave me, oh, I could use my density formula, right? Density is D equals M over V. If I have the density and the volume, I can solve for the mass. If I just reroute this formula, M equals density times liters, right? So all I got to do is just multiply these two numbers together, but the units have to work. If the density units is in mils, the volume that I have have to be in mils as well. But I know how to go from liters to milliliters, right? You just multiply by 1,000. So this would essentially be 1,000 mils. So let's see what my mass is. My density is 0 0.7025 times 1,000. OK, now what mass am I working with with my, my gasoline, right? 702.5 grams, and that's of gasoline, aka C8H18. Now I'm going to start with this. So I'm going to write that up here, 702.5 grams of the gasoline, C8H18. Okay, now I still can't use this conversion because I need to be in moles. But wait a minute, I know how to go from grams to moles times by the ratio right? And maybe what I'm going to do is pause the video. I just need a little bit more space. I'm going to get rid of the density math right here. So just pause it and write it down if you need it, but bye. It's going. I just need a little bit more room. 
Okay. So now, grams of C8H18 on the bottom, mole of C8H18 up on top, gram to mole relationship of the same compound is the periodic table. One mole equals whatever the molar mass is of C8H18. So I got eight carbons times 12.01 plus 18 hydrogens. So I get roughly a mass of 114.224. Grams cancels out. And now I'm at moles. I can finally use this conversion. So times by a ratio, throw the unit that you don't want on the bottom, mole of C8H18, and I want to use those kilograms. So this is saying I'm going to produce out 5,116.06 kilojoules of energy that will be released for every one mole of C8H18. So since I'm looking for C8H18, I have to use the one. But let's just say that this was CO2, you would put an eight down here. So just be careful. But since there's one of them, that's why I put a one here. And then the negative 5,116.06 goes up on the top. The units of mole of the gasoline, aka the C8H18, goes bye-bye. And now let's see what the math is. 702.5 times 5116.06 divided by 114.224. And I get, whoa, even more of a number. 31,464.8, we'll say 8. And that's in kilojoules. Okay. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. We're almost done. So now we don't really need any more of the math. We can get rid of this. So pause the video if you need it. All right. But that's going bye-bye. And I'm just going to um, just elaborate on this a little bit. If I, if I bring this over, I'm just going to say that this is now of the gasoline. And this is how much it would be per one liter. So it seems that obviously gasoline is a better pick over ethanol because for the same amount of volume, I will be able to, you know, have more heat being produced than this. Seems like this would go farther. But now the question is, how much farther would the same automobile be expected to travel? Well, they said that it's directly proportional, which means that I can make this a proportion. And a proportion just means a ratio, right? So I can say that I, I could put the gasoline kilojoules on the top and divide it by, divide it by the ethanol kilojoules. Right? That's, that's a proportion. They're directly proportional to each other. So let's see. Um, the gasoline was negative 31,464.8 kilojoules per negative 21.157.7 kilojoules. And let's just see what number I get. So 31464.8 divided by 21157.7. And let me just make sure that I have these numbers right. 31464.8211. Beautiful. So I get a number of one point, uh, I guess we'll do three sig figs. Or four sig figs, I guess we'll do, eh, whatever, right? <laughs> When you're this deep into chem, it's like, come on, sig figs, come on, really? So I'm just going to say that it's 1.487. Uh, okay, now if I wanted to keep this as a ratio, I would just put this over 1. This kind of gives us more context as to what's going on. If I just get rid of, actually I won't give it, get rid of it, but keep in mind that the gasoline is the higher number, and the ethanol is the lower number. So how much farther would the automobile travel? 
If it was run on gasoline versus ethanol, it would travel 1.487 times farther than the ethanol. So let's just say that the ethanol traveled, you know, two meters. You would just take uh, two times 1.487, and that would be how many meters the gasoline would travel the same automobile. So how much farther? 1.487 times farther. And is it farther? Is it further? I have no idea. <laughs> but we're in chem, so yeah. So that's it. There you go. We are done with this problem. All three uh, questions are answered. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. And if you can, please press the subscribe button. That will help us out greatly. The channel is almost at 15,000 subs and it's it's incredible. It's 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 so cool to see that we're building a community, uh, you know, of students and people of all different ages that, you know, value education. And that's a that's a great thing to see. All right? So, I hope you guys are doing well. Let's keep working hard. I believe in you guys. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes, and I will see you all in the next lesson. Take care. Bye-bye.